Hi, I'm Lisa Carlson. I'm the campus dietitian at Northwestern. And at the beginning of the year, we thought it was a good topic to talk about healthy meal planning. And so let's get started. Uh, I think one myth that always comes up is that healthy meals can't be also budget friendly. And there's nothing farther from the truth than that. And they can be budget friendly if you start with smart shopping. And, you know, of course, the whole thing about don't go to shopping when you're hungry. Also, if you do more of your prepping and eating at home, that's a good way to save money. If you make your meals full of vegetables, lean proteins, if you have right sized portions, so not too big, but also not too small. And if you focus on meals versus snacks, you're going to be in good shape. Um, what is a healthful plate? Well, there's all kinds of different healthful plates, depending on if you eat um, animal proteins or focus more on vegetarian, or if you eliminate all animal protein, so you may be vegan. Um, but this is like a typical healthful plate, I guess I would say. And that means that half of the plate is vegetables or fruit, mostly vegetables. About a quarter would be protein, so either animal or uh, vegetable proteins, plant proteins. And then a quarter would be more of the grains or starches, pasta, rice, potatoes, beans, and then uh, choosing water as a, as a good uh, beverage. It's a, probably a good thing to start with a budget. And everybody has to kind of determine their own budget. But I know with working with lots of students and lots of staff people, it's always surprising how much people spend on food if they haven't really gone through and, and done some calculations. So I always encourage beginning of the year to do some calculations. How much do you think you spend for a month? How much do you spend for a week? If you think it's a little bit too much, could you dial back a bit? And if you do dial back a bit, I just suggest starting out really gradually. And one thing for sure is if you are a smart shopper and you plan your meals and you prep your meals or, or a good number of them at home, you will definitely save money. So we're going to talk about that. Three steps to healthy meal planning. First one is you want to plan your meals. Um, you might want to plan them for the for the week, I mean, I don't see many people planning for the month, but a week is probably good. Most of us plan just for the day. Um, choose uh, recipes or meals that fit your budget. You know, don't go overboard with things that are going to be too uh, much of a luxury purchase, but um, maybe save those for a special occasion. Stop, um, shop and stock is one of my uh, favorite expressions, and that means that you want to really Look in your pantry, you want to stock up with staples and solutions and um, have them in the, your freezer, have them in your refrigerator, but also in your, in your pantry and know, know what you've got. When things are on sale, you might want to get a little bit more um, than you might otherwise. And then master prepping. Um, that means, and this is a good picture, when you get home from shopping, and not many people do this, but think about how you could prep some of the broccoli, some of the peppers, some of the onions that you bring home, and then they're all set for meals. So planning your meals, it's always good to get an idea and sketch out your meals for the week. And it could be as simple as you know, getting a little journal or just a piece of paper and just writing some things down. A lot of times we have some recipes or meals that we rotate through. Um, we don't often, you know, take a cookbook, cookbook out every day and plan. So sketch some of those meals out. See if they appeal to every family member, or if you're a student, you know, do you, do they appeal to you? Are there roommates that you're working with? So that's always good. You know, are people eating meat or vegetarian? Also, it's really important to see what kind of leftovers you might have. If you have extra rice or uh, maybe peas or beans, could you put that in a soup? Could you put it in a chili? Could you throw it into a stir fry? To make recipes a little healthier, you might want to choose some uh, plants or veggies because those are, are, those are typically uh, less expensive than meat protein. When you shop and stock, um, what that means is, okay, you're, you're looking in your pantry, you're looking in your freezer, you're finding out what you need, and then you're shopping. And the, 
we all know that you're not supposed to go um, shopping hungry. That is so key because things end up in your cart that maybe you're hungry for at the moment, but not necessarily good purchases. Really important to stick to a list. I think one thing we've learned at the beginning of the pandemic is wearing our mask, getting in and out as fast as we can, if you can stick to a list really good. I like to say stable solutions and sales. What that means is there's things that are going to go into your cart every week, every couple weeks. And those are things that are your staples, whether it's milk, peanut butter, bread, um, a bag of frozen vegetables, things like that. Solutions are the answers to the questions that you ask yourself every week. What's for dinner? What's a smart snack? What can I pack for lunch? What am I going to have for a weekend? Um, you know, maybe doing something with a roommate or a friend or a partner. Um, and then sales are really what is on special. The problem with sales is make sure that what's on special is something that's on your list or think about it ahead of time and figure out how you can make a recipe that uses that. Master, really master meal prep. And again, I'm showing a couple of pictures of how you can um, take things right from the supermarket. When you come home, you're un unpacking, but kind of create some meals right away or chop up some things so that they make it easy to make a meal later. Um, it's good to buy um, frozen vegetables, buy them at the dollar store. If it's a fresh vegetable, make sure that it's in season. You can buy family packs of things or bulk packs, but make sure that you're going to use it. And if you bring them home, make sure that you cut it up and then you freeze it or you know how you're going to use it. Rotisserie chicken is, is another good one. Um, just going to go through a couple of tic, uh, tips. Cooking in bulk can be really, really great. It's not for everyone, but it's a great way to be very smart with your, um, with your meals, make ahead and really have solutions when you come home from a long day of studying or a long day of work, have something ready. This is one that I love is um, making, if, if you are a meat eater or you can even make uh, vegetarian meatballs, is to make them ahead, make small um, meatloafs ahead, and then you can put them in the freezer, you can pull them out when you want them. And this is great. I know I'm, my family's Swedish and we're gonna be making Swedish meatballs ahead of time because our guests arrive a couple of days early and, and it would be good to get those out of the way. Um, again, this is not for everyone, but if you're so inclined to make some of um, your ingredients like dressings, very easy to make. You, know, you get one of these um, mason jars and you shake up a little bit of oil and vinegar and, and um, mustard and, um, and some seasonings. It's really great. Pesto you can make yourself, hummus, tomato sauce. If you, if you um, have uh, had an overcrop of tomatoes, if you were a gardener, there's nothing like homemade tomato sauce. And you can actually use it um, from uh, canned, canned uh, uh, tomatoes as well, uh, diced tomatoes. Make your own soups and chilies and chowders. These are great um, items to freeze and then pull out on a, on a cold day where you just really don't feel like going out, you don't really feel like making food, this is a great one. And make your own pizza. I mean, make your own pizza could be as simple as buying a crust and then just topping it yourself, uh, using some leftovers, especially veggies. And, uh, you know, it could also be just even um, buying your, your favorite thin crust pizza that's on sale instead of going out, instead of uh, doing takeout. Make your own salads. Um, this is something that I, uh, I usually uh, tell students that, that they can do, especially if they've got their own apartment. You can make this the morning of, and you don't have to make a, a salad uh, just before dinner. And a lot of times people will say, oh, that's too, too difficult. But if you're a morning person, you might get into something like this. Slow cooking. If you have a one pot cooker, um, use it. Uh, veggie chili, sloppy joes beef for tacos, uh, vegetable protein for tacos is really great. And there's so many things you can you can do with that. And you know, pasta dishes, there's so many different ones that you can make ahead. And uh, of course, tacos and burritos. Creating a healthy dish or bowl um, can look like this, you know, like the, the first, um, one of the first slides we saw. About half a plate of veggies, 
about a quarter of a plate of protein, which is, you know, could be animal protein, could be vegetable protein, and then a quarter of starch. And it doesn't have to be segmented this way. It could be in a, a Buddha bowl, very colorful, with all kinds of healthful fats and, and veggies and, and proteins and greens. Um, you can look all different ways. I always like to encourage um, people to choose what their favorite staples are and make sure that they have them on hand. Here's just a couple if, um, if people need ideas. Rotisserie chickens are great. And of course, you, you know, that's something that you maybe buy and then you cut it up and then you could use it for all kinds of different things. Canned beans, um, lentils cook up so quickly, don't need to be hydrated. Canned tuna can be used in so many different things. Frozen vegetables, I always encourage people to, you know, go to the dollar store. I mean, now it's going to be a dollar twenty-five, not a dollar. But um, frozen veggies at the dollar store are really great. Quick cooking, brown rice, mustards can be uh, great for dressings, whole grains, oatmeal. And having um, diced tomatoes or tomato sauce is always really good. Uh, people ask me a lot about uh, meal kits and ready-mades, and they can be really great. They can they can um, be good to kind of um, allow yourself to catch your breath if you if you are working really hard and you just need something that's going to that's going to help you. And here are some ideas of of kits that have been really highly recommended this past year, and especially in you know the time of COVID, um, people are turning to things like this. People are also looking for meal planning apps. And here are a couple that um, I've encouraged people to use. You know, you can find ones that work for you that are that are a little bit more focused on vegetarian or plant-based, um, ones that use leftovers, and all of these are really good. So in summary, and, and this little graphic on the side is something that we're gonna offer at Healthy Meal Planning and Shopping. It's a, it's a nice little guide. But healthy meals can be affordable, they can be delicious, they can actually be easy when you do a couple of things, when you plan ahead and you prep ahead. When you are a smart shopper, you, you know, you don't go hungry, you um, shop the perimeter and you plan ahead and stick to your list. That um, you budget as much as you can, and one of the best ways is to eat at home, you know, as often as you can. And, um, and if you, you know, stock up, you are going to have stuff in your refrigerator and in your pantry. Eat more meals than snacks. And it's one thing I often tell students because I think if you eat meals, you're not going to have the urge to snack as much. And snacks are really great if you just need to fill in and, and you know, take the, take the edge off your hunger. And then eat lots of veggies and plants and, uh, and fewer animals is a really great way to stay healthy and keep your meals affordable. And that's healthy meal planning and um, all the best as we go into the new year. And I guess the last thing I would say is I'm from Northwestern Dining. And if anybody wants to get in touch with me, I'm diet, I'm, uh, my um, email is dietitian at northwestern.edu. Thanks so much.